Hey, opposing good day hockey fans. This one's going to be for the Edmonton Oilers squad, as this one is going to be for Oiler Nation as we go into the Edmonton Oilers rounding out the season regular season report and going into their player analysis as well. Heading into the playoffs, as I'll be doing a series preview. I should say a player preview. I'm not doing individual ones for each team, but I'm doing series previews where I'll talk in depth on how each team looks in those as well as this is rounding out the regular season reports, talking about how the teams got to the promised land of the great Stanley Cup playoff. A big thing, obviously, for the Edmonton Oilers, as much as some people hate to admit it, is the pickup of Evander Kane offensively. He's really helped them out. Obviously, he ain't a defensive whiz, but he will. He has given pretty good effort in Jay Woodcroft's system, and Woodcroft's came in. He deserves all the credit as well. Obviously, he's not going to be mentioned for a coach of the year. He was doing good with Bakersfield to start the year, but he has come in and really got the most out of these guys. This is not a great defensive team. That worries me going into the playoffs, but I'll save that for my playoffs series um, review or preview, I should say, video as I do the preview of their series against the LA Kings. But picking up Brett Kulak, he's more of a settle down the defense, uh, more of a defensive defenseman first that just plays a good, simple, settle it down game. Evan Bouchard has been very good offensively. He's still growing as a defensive defenseman, but I think he gets a bigger rip than he deserves from some. When I follow the Facebook groups and hockey reddits and all that, that he really deserves for his defense. I think he's actually fairly okay defensively. He's not better than that yet, but he's only 22 freaking years old. And this could be his coming out party as an overall defenseman because when all is said and done, I think by the time he's 25 in his prime, he is going to be an overall great, well-rounded defenseman. In my own opinion, Cody Ceci is a good playoff style defenseman. Brings the round and pound. Darnell Nurse is a bigger body as well. So I think their first line works really well. Duncan Keith at this point doesn't bring a whole lot for you. Can't keep up with the play as much. But at least he's been a very good locker room mentor. Maybe he will be one of those guys, kind of like the cross, not the cross sports, but Danny Green has stepped up for the uh, Sixers and NBA players that can be one of those wily veterans that does step up in the playoffs. And that's what they hope Broussard can be because Broussard hasn't really done anything for them since he's come over from the Philadelphia Flyers. But Ryan McLeod, I think, has come in, provides some good fourth-line minutes. Zach Cassian's an uber-intelligent player. He's just not this style of current-era player because he can't really keep up with the play. Keith used to be able to keep up with the play very well. It's just it's, it, he's 38. So, but Cassian, even at 31, he just never was a fast skater. He can still give you some valuable third-line high-effort minutes, but he's just not gonna, not a guy that can really keep up with the play. And it's in, and it's interesting to see if it's going to be interesting to see, I should say, if they end up going with a guy like Archibald Moore or Devin Shore. That brings a little bit more speed. Shore also brings more size than Archibald. So it's going to be interesting because Cassian isn't the best matchup, I think, for against the LA Kings, but I'll save that uh, for the preview for that series. Lauren Fogel is a guy you would hope steps up more as, as going into the postseason, but I think in the regular season to round out the year, he did start looking like more of the Warren Fogel from Carolina, and that is would be good for the Oilers if they can get that more consistently where he can be just a good guy on the defensive end. Obviously, he has Nugent Hopkins, and then just supply that very smart, witted offense on the offensive end, and that's what you expect from Fogel. You don't expect any of, of the wowza moments from Fogel, and he's on a good third line with him and Nuge, and then whoever they decide to put in there. Sometimes it's been Derek Ryan, other times I think it's been Brass and others, but uh, he can be a good player in the playoffs. It's just will he be able to do it because he has had an off overall season. Yamamoto started to heat up uh, to round out the season and, and didn't start off have a great year. It was an inconsistent year, but rounded out and had a solid overall year of 19 and 19. Dry settles obviously a stud, a, a German spectacle. I wrote an article calling him that, one of my favorite players in the league. Zach Hyman fit perfectly into this. He adds more snarl to your team. Evander Kane has some snarl. Connor McDavid, obviously Paul Yarvey coming back from overseas, uh, started to develop into a guy that's not just valuable in the offensive end, but actually can play. He's not, I wouldn't call him a great defender by any stretch, but he definitely is a guy that can be a guy that competes at a high level block shots for you and at least be valuable in the defensive end at this point. Definitely is not a liability and is a, probably at least an average, if not good defender at this point. So I think the Oilers have a very good squad, especially in their first two lines. Then they have Nugent Hopkins after that. And then Ryan McLeod, I also think, has developed himself into a good 4C. So I think they're good, honestly, down the middle. Their problem is their forwards in their third and fourth line. How good is Cassian going to play in the current era? And then is Devin Shore or Josh Archibald going to be able to step up if you're trying to add more speed to take Cassian out? 
What's Derek Broussard going to be in the postseason? What's Derek Ryan, to, not to pick on the Derek's, but what are they going to be in the postseason? And is Fogel going to step up his play from a bad regular season and play more like he was able to play in Carolina compared to most of the season in Edmonton where he had his good moments, but obviously you need to see that consistency in the postseason and the defense would concern me. But for the Reds, for the regular season, I think the overall team pushed the end. He was one of the most exciting offensive teams to watch, especially in their first two lines, and Ryan Nugent Hopkins, who was able to <coughs> excuse me, supply my allergies would be a great third line offense. And Fogel started to supply better third line offense to round out the season. And that would be huge. Ryan Derek Ryan's a solid depth player, but he's not gonna add a lot of offense. So obviously depth offense is a concern with me with the Oilers going into the postseason. But I do think their first two lines were some of the more fun to watch in the league, even though Pujarvi doesn't put up the hell of a lot of points yet in his career. Still in the 23, definitely can start to do it later. But he's a guy that's been very valuable at being able to keep puck possessions in the zones, hard on the puck, strong on the puck, and that's a very valuable thing to have on a line with Connor McDavid and Evander Kane. Not, and obviously be able to set up those studs to be able to get the goal, so he also doesn't really need to play the role of a goal scorer when you're on that line. But this has been the Edmonton Oilers rounding out the regular season report, as I'll be doing a series preview to the LA Kings and their game shortly, but this has been the rounding out the regular season report and player analysis. Definitely have a great offensive team. The defense will be what concerns me, plus obviously the goaltending as well. Mike Smith finished out the season hot and was a star of the month, but you're going to need that Mike Smith consistently in the postseason. To have any shot, Koskinen stepped up. As a backup level goalie, in my own opinion, a lot of people disagree with me on that, but did step up as a backup level goalie, I think. And I've been hard on Miko Kostin in the past, so I will give him that. But he's a backup level goalie, that's what he is. So you're going to need Smith to really be the big kahuna, the guy on campus that gets it done. And if he doesn't do that, I don't see the, the Oilers having good chances um, going forward. But for the regular season, he was able to really have a very good ending, and that's what helped the Oilers to not get caught by the LA Kings as well. So we'll have to see what happens in the postseason. But great job offensively um, from this team in the regular season to get them where they're at. And they started playing much better defensively with Woodcroft. The problem is obviously the players are different beasts. They have a lot of unproven animals in the postseason. And guys that have been in past postseason, some on their defense, but are now <clears throat> not the same player they used to be like Duncan Keith, for example, or Tyson Barry, who's never going to do anything for you in the defensive zone. So you got to hope he really brings it in the offensive zone. But peace out, everybody. Stay safe. Please subscribe down below to keep the channel growing to 250 or more to meet our goal by the beginning of June. Have a great and safe day, everybody. Stay safe out there and hope you guys enjoyed the regular season. The Stanley Cup players are almost upon us. It's the greatest time of the year for people that are into the ECHL. Kelly Cup players already started, and the Calder Cup players are also almost upon us. Peace out, everybody. Stay safe and enjoy your day. This has been the Oilers regular season recap and player analysis video. Peace out, everybody.